This is Shirley Noctree. I'm from St. Charles, Missouri, and I have here Amy Wilson from the Freemasons Art Gallery in St. Charles, and she is taping our program. Today, I am going to be demonstrating um, flowers, and it's just after Christmas, and my poinsettia is just blooming beautifully. And so what I'm going to do is actually paint the poinsettia, and um, I've already got it pre-sketched here, and this is my model. And um, it's such a beautiful plant, and when the um, season is over for plants, if they still are talking to me, then I have to paint them. And this is so beautifully organic and has all different kinds of uh, shapes and sizes of leaves. So this is what we're going to do for tonight. And so here we are, and we're going to begin. This is a watercolor demonstration, and I am going to be using seven colors, and that is the split primary palette that Nina Leland mentions in her book, Exploring Color. So we have a warm and cool red, a warm and cool yellow, a warm and cool blue, and burnt sienna. So what I'm gonna do here, to show you the colors that we're going to be using and I'll put a sample on to my um, watercolor paper. So here's the Windsor Yellow. That is cool. Here's New Gamboge. That is warm. Then we have Windsor Red or Permanent Rose. That is cool. Then we have Windsor Red, which is warm. Can you see the difference? Cool and warm. This looks like it has a little bit of orange or yellow in it. Okay, and then we have a cool blue. That can be Prussian, Thalo, and then in this case, it's Antwerp Blue. All my colors are Windsor Newton. And that's my favorite brand. And then over here, I'm gonna put here, this is French Ultramarine Blue. And this is a blue that's considered warm because it has red in it. And then we have Burnt Sienna. And Nina Leland calls this the magic color, Burnt Sienna. Because this, Burnt Sienna, added to any one of these colors here, um, tones down the color and makes it special. You can take all of these, add burnt sienna to them, and it will go from a spring palette to a autumn palette. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, and then to get your tints of color, um, all you have to do is add water to these to make them lighter. Okay, now sometimes um, I will pre-sketch my drawing in watercolor pencil, and sometimes I will sketch that in just regular pencil. But whatever you're sketching with, make sure you only use a kneaded eraser on your watercolor paper. And I'm going to lighten the pencil line. It even erases watercolor pencil. So I'm going to lighten this. Here we go. This flower, Susie. So Susie is saying, make me beautiful and make others want to paint me too. I'm sure some of you still have your poinsettias at home from the holidays. And we don't throw them out. We let them bloom until they say they're finished. So actually, the poinsettia is originally from Mexico and it's a it's a wild plant down there. And these are the red, the red leaves are the leaf as well as the green is the leaf and the flower is the little budding things in the center so this is actually a leaf and it's highly poisonous to animals or whoever eats it so here we go now i'm going to be using um a warm red to make the the, the leaf appear to come towards me and then i'll use the cool red to make it look like it's going away 
So I'm going to pull the colors out into my John Pike palette. So there's my Windsor Red. Here's my Permanent Rose. Here's French Ultramarine Blue. Now, I may not be using that much, but when I want to get um, dimension, then that's when I'll be using uh, making a lavender. Here is Antwerp Blue or Prussian or Thalo, whichever one you have on your palette. And then we have the Cool Yellow, which is Windsor Yellow or Cadmium Yellow Light. And then we have New Gamboge, which is um, sort of the color of a school bus. So now we have six colors, cool, warm, cool, warm, cool, warm. All right, and then our magic color is burnt sienna. Okay, I'll probably need to get more of that out. Now, you will save money if once you get a palette that you like, this is John Pike, and um, if you put or squeeze out all your colors, you want to follow the color wheel as you put those in your palette, then you don't have to be carrying your tubes around all the time. And then when you're ready to paint, all you need to do is take a mister, a water mister, and just reactivate the colors. So that's as simple as that. And you only use uh, distilled water in your bottle. Okay, I'm gonna move this over here. And now we're ready to paint. So when you are going down, under, and around, we use a cool or darker color. When you go up, over, or out, we go a warmer color. So I'm going to start with the cool, because I'm going to be going. This is down. Usually I say, if you see a V uh, in your shapes, then that's cool. And then I'm going to take Windsor Red and move that up. I hope you can see the difference between those two colors. And then as I get towards the top, I'm going to add a little bit of New Gamboge to that. Now, an artist's job is to entertain the viewer's eye. So as I'm, you're painting, you want to exaggerate. So we're going to exaggerate those colors. There's some more Windsor Red, some more New Gamboge. Okay, and uh, while that is wet, we can um, scrape in um, the veins. So I'm going to use the bottom of my brush and scrape in the veins here. Now, that is just, just uh, it's distressing the surface tension and creating, um, what do you call it? Uh, it's, it's scratching through the fibers, so it's, it's, you won't be able to paint the same way once you scratch it. It won't be the same. Okay, now I'm going to put a little bit of French Ultramarine Blue in my permanent rose and make this a little bit darker. And then that makes that more lighter feeling because that's darker. Okay, and then if you felt like you wanted to give it more dimension, Think of the power of three, light, medium, and dark. So right now, um, the, actual, the yellow is actually lighter than the red, and I'm going to have to put a little bit more red in there. Let me do that before I do anything else. As, uh, watercolor is dried lighter. You have to remember that. There. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is where I scraped the vein, I'm going to lift a highlight just above that. And now I'll have another dimensional change, which gives this the feeling of three dimension, even though it's two dimensional. And I'm just squeegeeing off a little bit of paint above the scraping mark. That's working pretty good through here because the shine has gone off the paper, and that's when you should be lifting. Down here, it's still pretty wet, so it's not cooperating as well. 
okay, but it's, it's doing pretty good. Okay, now, usually you don't paint two wet areas next to each other. So I can't paint here or here, but I can paint here because they're not touching. And so I'm looking at my plant and, okay, and this is the leaf I'm doing and there's a shadow on it right here. So what I'm gonna do is start with the purple because it's, it's a shading color for red I'm going to move that, and this this is sort of a graded wash, but we'll wait and see how that goes. Um, now I'm, <laughs> I just realized what I did. You don't want to do that. You don't want to put a warm red over a purple because those are opposite. But I did it anyway, so we'll we'll deal with that. So we want a cool red. Here's a cool red. Okay, and then I'm going to get warm right through here to make it look fuller and more closer to you. So now I'll go with with a, a yellow, New Gamboge. And so we get sort of an orange. Now poinsettia is coming a lot of colors. Um, there's a nursery on Manchester Road in St. Louis called Far Nursery. And every Thanksgiving, they open up their nursery to the public to come in and look at their poinsettias and have acres and acres and acres of poinsettias. And I'm going into a valley. See the V? Okay, that's going to be cool. Okay, then I'll blend that slightly. That's just dry brush blending. Okay, now I'm going to scrape. I'm looking uh, for the direction that that's coming from. And there we go. We are distressing the surface when we do that. Okay, and if I want more dimension, then I need to lift a light. So I'm gonna go in between the veins and lift. And then that is a, a, uh, it's a value change, so it's a dimensional change. Okay, now here's another thing. If that looks too spotty, you can take, hand me that, um, one inch brush. Okay. If that looks spotty and you want to blend, this is a dry brush and you just whisper over that paint and it blends it to where it's, you can't see those definitions. Dry brush blend. Okay. So here we go again. Um, I'll go back over to here and that's kind of a reddish violet. So I'm going to use the permanent rose with French ultramarine blue and go a little bit more violet with this. It goes down there. And then okay. And then as I go out, up over and out, I'm gonna go lighter in value. water so this is a graded wash okay now as I get to the top here I'm going to go a little bit warmer with um, winter red okay now I think I put just a little bit of yellow in there I don't want all them all to look exactly alike that, that, that would work that gives it a little bit more uh, heart Okay, now that's pretty wet, so I'm going to wait for a couple minutes before I do any scraping on that one. This one's going off, so it's not as important. So I'm going to keep that kind of quiet. Lighter, maybe. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, I like it. This is a flip right here. Now that's wet. So I have to wait to do the flip. You see it right there, that's the flip. I have to wait for that to be dry before I paint the flip. It just needs to be a different color. Now usually it's lighter. So that's the flip and this is the center. Okay, 
now it's time to lift this and pushing away now another thing you can use for a uh, uh, an awl is to take uh, your paper mitt paper mate sharp writer pen pencil and push twist the lead back into the pencil and you can scrape actually with that and that works pretty good too so that's another option okay now that's wet that's wet so I have to wait to do that one I can come down here and do this one and that's going to be green now with your greens there's three colors that you you choose from one is Windsor Yellow, the other one is uh, Antwerp Blue, and the third one is Burnt Sienna. Windsor Yellow, Antwerp Blue, and Burnt Sienna. Okay, if I take Antwerp Blue and mix it with Burnt Sienna, I'm going to get this dark green. If I mix it with just Windsor Yellow, I'm going to get more of a limey green. So I'm going to vary um, between the blue and the, and the, the yellow and then the burnt sienna to get my, my various greens. And I'm thinking I want the feeling of dimension, so I want a value change or a uh, warmer cool change. So here we go. We're going to go darker where the leaf is just under that leaf, the red leaf. And as we come out, we'll go warmer. That'll give us the illusion of dimension. Okay. And then I'm going to use the pencil with the retracted uh, graphite to do that, to lift those veins. Okay. Now below, we have stem. So I'm going to block that in with a flat wash. Now my favorite brand of paint is Windsor Newton. But any of these will work. Any paints will work. And they should all be the same brand, whatever you decide to use. Okay, what I'm doing here is creating um, a dimensional change. Wherever uh, one surface joins another one, hits another edge, you want that to be a little bit darker. Okay, so where that meets the edge of the leaf, there's, it's a little bit darker. I don't know if I can lift any lights or not. Let me see. A little bit. But I have a feeling I'm going to be adding more dark, more darks. Okay, so. A little bit more Antwerp blue, because this is going to dry lighter. That's what you got to keep remembering. It's going to dry lighter. Now when that's completely dry, when it's completely dry, then you can go back and add um, another layer if you want, but it has to be dry. Don't go back in when it's partly dry. That's, that's the mistake a lot of artists make, is they go back too soon. You want that to be dry. Okay, and what I'm doing here is trying to create a different green for a variety that is way too loud. So, choose an earth green, more burnt sienna added to the Antwerp blue. Darker down here, lighter as I go up. And I like that. It may not be um, realistic, but it's pleasant and it's different and it's exciting and I can also do a wet into wet with burnt sand in here in just a second okay. sometimes I'll just bleed wet into wet a little bit of color and it just it just adds a little a little more to it without making a totally different color now those veins didn't show up very good let me try it again that's better. Now, these veins are dark when, you're, when, you, when you do this scraping. But if I waited until this was almost dry, then did it, the scraping would be white. 
we get back to the paper. So that's another way of figuring out, you know, what, what you want to do is do you want the veins to be light or dark? Okay, now we have, from the looking at the plant, this is more limey green here. It's probably getting red, it's also got red in it. This is a beautiful, beautiful miniature poinsettia. Okay. And a little bit cooler down over here. It's in shade. touching all four sides if I if I can manage that when I'm doing a painting. Um, it anchors it anchors the work. Makes it feel stronger. Okay, now I have to play with these connecting here. And a little bit more blue. Antwerp. I'm barely touching the surface, so I'm just moving the, the surface paint. Okay, let me see if I can get some pure yellow in there to give it a little bit more of a hot spot. Okay, that really added life to it. I'm going to add some over here. Sometimes while you're painting, you, there's, there's an intuition that takes place while you're painting and the painting will tell you what it needs. Okay, this one is a red one that's way in the back. So I'm gonna go with a red violet. Apply another red violet. Leaf. Negative painting around that one. So this is a permanent rose and a French ultramarine blue. If I want some more dimension on that, I'll just take some French ultramarine blue and make, make that darker right there. So you just see it partially. Now over here, we have this flip. So what I'm gonna do is add a lighter value, a permanent rose, and paint that flip in. there that goes with that leaf right there. Yeah, I don't know what that is. So I'm, I'll just erase that when I get to it. Okay, here we go with another another leaf, red leaf. So it's warmer up there. Ones are red. As I come down, because I'm getting into the shadows now, I'm going to go with permanent rose and a violet. So, your violets, permanent rose, and French ultramarine blue. And that's still a little bit damp, so that they, they may end up holding hands here in a minute. That's not bad though. That, that gives you a lost edge. Now I'm going to scrape. Okay. So as you paint, you can use your emotion. You know, if it feels like it needs something, then do it. It doesn't have to be photographic. Um, so do what it feels like it should be. It, this should be bringing you joy as you're painting because it makes you happy. So if you have it, if you're instinctive to do something, just go ahead and do it. And here's my cool red again. 
And so what I want to do is get that stem in there. It's going to be cooler and darker right here. So I'm going to put a little bit of violet in there. And as I pull it up, then I'm going to add a Windsor Red. Now, as you change colors, you are rinsing your brush, taking that previous color off of there, okay? Or wiping it on your towel, your paper towel. Okay, so here we go. And what I was starting to tell you earlier about Far Nursery is they have some beautiful poinsettias and they're not all red. They have orange ones and peach ones and yellow ones and blue ones and violet ones. And people will custom order different colors to, to suit their decorating. Um, anyway, I've never seen so many beautiful flowers. And a lot of people will go there and um, take their uh, Christmas pictures while they're at the nursery and everybody just stand around in the poinsettias and uh, take pictures for their Christmas card. So, that's pretty cool. Now you can see the, the feeling of dimension because I went from warm light to, to a cooler red to a violet. So that should give you the feeling of we didn't change value so much as we changed it to color temperature. Okay. Now I've got one here that is um, um, it's a light color. It's, it's a combination of both reds. So I'm going to take both reds, dilute it, because it's not very dark. It's, the dark's going to come underneath. So here's a flip. Okay, I'm just going to block that in, and when that's dry, I'll come back and darken underneath the flip. The flip's right here. And I'll go ahead and scrape in the veining. This is going to be darker later. We'll keep this flip light. Now I'm going to go back to find me a dry one. Mm. It's pretty wet and I want that actually want that color to be warm so what I'm going to do is go to Windsor Red here that's the warm red violet as it disappears a um, little bit of yellow here let me get back to that violet change colors you rinse your brush okay now that's pretty wet it's going swimming the colors are swimming and bleeding so that's a wet into wet feeling right there okay now I'm seeing I need to put more violet over there so without adding extra water I'm using the existing wetness of my paints I'm going to put violet over here. Okay. And then use that same violet here. And then move that up. Going from violet to permanent rose. See how well those two like each other. Okay. To Windsor Red. You need to go New Gamboge or Windsor Yellow, so I'm going New Gamboge. It's just to warm up that red, not uh, make it orange, okay? Although I have seen orange poinsettias, so. And there. Now, I want a little bit more dimension, so I'm going to do a little lifting between the veins. This is an angle shader brush, and it's not for painting, it's for lifting. 
So that's what I'm using it for. Okay, so I see a slight value change, and so that's good. I'll move to an area that is dry. So this is dry. I go to permanent rose, interchange there. Okay, you see what's happening? I got two wet ones, that's the third wet one next to each other. So how I'm gonna get out of that trouble is, I'm gonna pay attention. As I bring this color down, this is Windsor Red, I'm going to leave just a hairline unpainted. Okay, that'll get me out of that dilemma. Here's a little bit of new gamboge. Okay, now I'm going to scrape. Now I'm going to add the color next to it. Okay, I'm going to scrape this again so it shows up better. leaving a hair unpainted. Do you see that? Okay. You paying attention? Okay. Now, what we're going to do here, get that purple in there. From what, permanent rose, then to Windsor Red. You probably know this by heart now. And then New Gamboche. So I'm following the color wheel, more or less. hill. The hill will be warmer and lighter. The hill of the shape of the leaf. I'm going to go back to Windsor Red. And then back to Permit Rose. So we're interchanging colors as we go along. Okay, and now scrape. between the scrapes with the angle shader. Okay, now what do we got? I need to go darker here on this one. So, put it rose with just a little bit. Now you can see where the flip is, it's lighter. And this is the underneath part of that leaf. See it? Okay. The scraping isn't showing up, so I'm going to do it again. Trying to use the same grooves I did before. Okay. This one is red. This one's green, and this one's green. So we're almost wrapping up this portion of the demo. So, um, let's see here. This will be permanent rose. That's the flip. Over here is going to be uh, Windsor Red. So I'm gonna wait a minute. This will be green and green. So now let's go back to the green mixtures. We have Antwerp Blue and uh, Burnt Sienna for my darkest green, darkest green is almost black. And then I can do any correcting uh, that I need to do. And then interchange with a lighter green, Antwerp Blue and uh, Windsor Yellow. And then Windsor Yellow. To that blend again. Antwerp blue and Windsor yellow. And then back to the dark. So it feels like there's a hill in between, a light between the two darks on the leaf. Okay, that's very, very wet. So I'm going to give that a couple minutes. 
and then I'll do the scraping. And here's a leaf that I'm just barely seeing the edge of it, but it's in there. Okay, it's there, but it's not complete, and that's okay. Now, I'm going back to that other part of that leaf. This is the flip. This is the, the warm, like that. And so I'm going to use Windsor Red with some new gamboge. And again, I'm going to leave a hairline where I'm not painting, touching it. And then, when this is all dry, I can just go back and, and touch up that hairline that's not painted with a tint of color. It doesn't have to be, you know, the same color as the as the the leaf. It just has to be not white. So we have a poinsettia that doesn't look photorealism. It's got a personality. Um, it feels joyful. If you were going to put a background in it, then these would all have to be dry. And you would just go from shape to shape to shape to shape to shape to shape. Um, wet and then bleed in the color. So uh, give that a minute and then I want to show you something. Okay. Here's a poinsettia idea for a Christmas card and painted very similarly to tonight's demo. Um, but in addition to the watercolor, I went back over it with Sharpie pen. So it's the ultra fine tip Sharpie pen to give this more drama. Now, this is what I want to introduce to you is um, watercolor pencils. Um, this is a little added bonus. Um, if you haven't tried watercolor pencils, uh, they come in a variety of sizes from 8 to 12 to 24. Um, uh, different brands. Derwent is one of them. And um, I guess you see that a lot at Michael's, the Derwent. And uh, this one is Fantasia. Um, premium Arc uh, watercolor. So, Fantasia. And I think these are a little bit harder um, than the Derwent. So, that's my favorite. You can tell how much those have been used. And usually you get a variety of yellow, greens, and blues, and reds. There's enough there, and you get a black and a white. So if you know your color theory, then you can mix the color you want here. It doesn't have to be exact. So what I want to show you, and this, and this is very exciting for me to share this with you, because this is what I did for my Christmas cards this year, is I drew everything in watercolor pencil and I could do this while I was watching TV or talking to my husband at the table or talking to someone on the phone I would just sit there and I would play with um, like coloring in a coloring book actually and you would also I'm going to lift this while I'm talking lift between the veins okay and that gave that another dimension I just got a fingerprint on that. So, fix that right there. And put in some veining over here. Okay. You don't want too much detail going off the page. So that's about right. Okay. Now, what I did is I took the same flower and put it in watercolor pencil. So, when I was working with the red, Remember what I said about the power of three? You want light, medium, dark. You want warm, medium, cool. So I used all three of these. And then where I have darker, I went to a violet. Okay, so now I'm gonna add water. The same rules apply. As you add water to watercolor pencil, you wanna stroke in the direction that the plant is growing from the bottom up. And I'm using this brush, it's called a Dagger Striper. It's one of my favorite brushes. Um, 
and I'm going to move from the bottom up the way it grows and as I get those colors wet they start blending and so that's why you want to stroke the way it grows so it looks <coughs> natural okay and I'm going over this one the same rules apply you don't want two wet ones on the same next to each other wet. So I'm going to skip around and wet these. And you wipe your brush after each one or you pick up color. As you pick up color and you don't want to lay it back down again, you need to lift. Okay, now, remember when we scraped on the other one, on the watercolor? Let's see what would happen here. If it doesn't work, then we take a darker pencil. Okay, that doesn't work as well. So what I'm going to do is just take the red watercolor pencil and actually go in here while this is wet and put in my veins. Now don't go overboard on this. You don't want to make it look like it's got eyelashes, but you can work with that dry or you can work with it wet. These are a lot of fun to play with. So don't be afraid to experiment. And if you experiment on the Strathmore blank watercolor cards, remember sure it says watercolor by Strathmore, um, no matter how these turn out, they're going to be beautiful. And whoever receives one of your cards is going to feel very special. Okay, so you can see I basically drew the same uh, format. These colors blend as they are wetted down. Now, if you feel like when that's wet, that it needs more color because it's wet, you can actually add more color. Or you can wait for it to completely dry, then add more color. Okay, here's violet. A little bit darker here. A little bit darker here. See, it's getting too dry. But do that now or I can do it later. You just kind of play with it and say, well, it's too soon. Okay, so move on. So, to me, this is very exciting and I love doing these. I did a series of birds for my Christmas cards and uh, they look darling in, the, in watercolor pencil because you can see the drawing part of it. But it's not graphite, so it looks special when it's watercolor. And even though it's in a pencil form, it's still considered watercolor. So if you were to put this in a show, it would be in the watercolor category. If you don't add water to it, then it would be in the drawing category. Isn't that great? Two options here. Okay. Let's see. Uh, the uh, the veining is not quite symmetrical. It's asymmetrical, but very close to symmetrical. Okay, now clean the brush. Going to work with green. The same rules apply. You change the change the whitewash the brush as you change the color. This is in the background, so it's kind of grayish. Here's two wet areas together. Let's see if we can make them work together. Now this is the watercolor greeting card I'm painting on, so you can see what, how that how that works. Okay, here's my violet. I'm going to add that those veinings to that. Okay, now I'm ready to do the stem. I'm picking up quite a bit of color on here. So I use that, use that, use that. I can continue to do the greens because I've got still got color on my brush from where I picked it up. So here we go on this one. And we've got at least three greens in the box of 24 watercolor pencils. 
it's kind of dull. Let me see what I can do to pick that up. Okay, here's more bluish gray. I'm going to touch the base on that one. Raise my brush. Colors change. Well, it's a different shade of green, but it's green. Um, I really like the way that kind of bluish green looks. Okay. And that was this one. And it's a Brunzel. And it's German. And it doesn't tell me what color it is. So it could be a blue or a teal. Okay. It needs this color, so I'm going to put it in here. Now, I could also wet this, put it in the water. Actually, put it in the water and work with it wet. I do that too. So you can work with watercolor pencil dry and then add water or you can work with them um, dipping them into the water and then working with them. Okay, this feels like it needs more dimensional change. So I'm going to go down here and darken this. some purple to this. There, yeah, that's better. Now when you don't know where the light's coming from, just pick a side. You know, I chose the, the right side. And when you hear that voice say, you know, why don't you add a little purple here, a little purple there, or add this yellow or something. See how that adds personality to that dimension? Now I'm also going to take a wet, a wet purple and play with the detail on the, the red. So that worked for the, um, the red as well as the green as putting this in here. Now this is becoming more playful and that's picking up my personality and that's what's fun is when you can approach it more like childlike fascination rather than worry. Um, okay, that's wet. Okay, it's still kind of a gentle flower. Okay, the flowers are gentle, gentle colors, more playful, more, I don't know, uh, personality. Okay, it needs a little bit of zap. Okay, now, this is probably the hardest for the beginning student. This is called um, an all-surface graphite pencil, and it's water. It's called the ALL surface. It means it, it goes on glass and wood and paper. Okay, so I'm going to put more drama into the... flower. Yeah, that did it. It's got more drama in it. So it's still watercolor, even though it's you see a drawing, but it's there's value changes, and value changes are very important uh, in, in painting. It gives you the uh, opportunity for it to feel more dimensional. Okay, now, if that feels like it's still not enough, then what, what do we do next? Well, guess what? This collection of watercolor pencils has black. Now, what would I do with black? Would be like I did with the other, other one where I added ink. I'm going to add black. Now, I could leave that just the way it is, but I'm going to play just for, for a little bit more. And I asked myself what would happen if. So I'm just going to play. Play, play, play. You know how to do that, right? Now, what's interesting is you try new things on a greeting card. And whoever gets that card is going to feel special. Okay? And it doesn't have to be perfect. Because it has you, your personality, your essence in that card. I forgot to put water on that one. Okay. 
So these turn out a little on the pale side because I didn't build up enough layers, and that's okay. Um, what's interesting is I can continue to add some personality here. Okay, it's not perfect, and that can be a good thing, but it's playful, so it is adds interest um, to the viewer as well as saying, oh, I like that because it's different. I like that because it's different. I like it because it's different. So you have to be happy with what you did. It doesn't matter what somebody else, how somebody else feels about it, as long as you feel like it expresses who you are and you had fun making it. This is black watercolor pencil that's been dipped in water. So, could you do a full sheet watercolor like that? Sure. Now, watercolor comes in crayon, uh, comes in brick shapes. Crayon d'arche comes in crayons. So you can actually paint with crayons or watercolor bricks. I get them at Dick Blick. Um, ooh, strong. Okay. And then when you sign your name, it should be no darker than the, some of the colors you use. So I'm just going to use this blue one. And I'm just going to sign my initials here. And then over here is where I'll take a, an, ink, an ink pen and actually write my full name and the date that I did this. So we are done for tonight. And we accomplished two paintings from this one simple baby poinsettias. Thank you for joining us. And I hope you had as much fun watching as I had painting.